When Bill Gates and Microsoft finally realized the tsunami of the internet was threatening his company core businesses and operating systems and applications, he wrote a letter to his employees, detailing his vision for the ways he believed his company needed to rapidly transform itself. And when Google's Sundar Pichai saw the transformational impact of machine learning software, what we call artificial intelligence or AI, he wrote a note telling the organization, we need to become an AI company. The COVID-19 pandemic is an important business disruptor, but not the only one. So now you want to catalyze change across your organization and make from a threat an opportunity. You're going to need to start by articulating the problem you see, the opportunities for the organization and your vision for how it can achieve that opportunity. Whether or not you are actually going to send a letter to your coworkers, you obviously need a well-defined vision. So you know what you'll say to enlist others in your cause. But don't just knock out a PowerPoint deck. You need to tell a story. Appeal to the heads and the hearts of the people you want to have join you on the journey. What will that changed organization look like? What's the journey to get there? And when you're successful, how will you know? Of course, then you need an action plan. Where will you start? What will the rollout of this initiative look like? Where will the resources come from? How will it actually get executed? Who will you enlist to help you flesh out your plan? And how will you continually adapt your plan as you learn? Don't try to answer all these questions yourself, of course. Involve a coalition of the willing and create a collaborative plan that will continually be adapted as you roll out. The more people you involve as you go along, the more you can create that growing river effect. And as soon as possible, work to infuse your change goals into the core strategy of the organization. Then work to get groups to, throughout the organization to align themselves to that change. What if you didn't actually have to lead change? What if your organization was continually adaptive? What if the ability to change was infused deeply into the culture of your organization? That's not some kind of dream. Companies like Asana, the team collaboration software, you know, manage the entire organization for four months in sprints. They call it chapters. Then they stop for a week to completely revamp their strategic and tactical plans, ensuring the organization can continually adjust to a constantly changing business landscape. And companies like Zappos organize their activities without any managers at all. Workers in the organization are per perpetually collaborating to determine where the organization should focus. If you don't believe me, look it up online. You, by the way, see Zappos wasn't that successful, but a lot of lessons learned that can help your organization. Their employee manual is, by the way, available to the public. So how could your organization operate if it embraced the fact that change equals management? Your HR or learning department would transform itself into a people department. Human resources sounds to me, by the way, it's like a thing. It's an asset. They are not resources, they're people. And one of the first things your people department should do is to offer mandatory training programs for leading change for every supervisor and manager. Teach them how to do creative, inclusive problem solving, and you'll see a dramatic cultural shift. We don't stop there. Infuse the mentality of managing for change into every person in the organization. Why can't every single worker act as a catalyst for positive change? Everyone should feel responsible for the organization to continually adapt to the challenges of tomorrow. Your people department should have a completely different mindset about leveraging the talents of people outside the organization as well. It needs to think of itself as a network coordinator, cultivating programs that expand the ways that people could engage with the organization. Think of the gig work, the remote workers, that is what the workshop is about, but also mentorships, apprenticeships, crowdsourcing, training programs for even non-employees, focus groups with your alumni. All of these are network process designed to soften the walls of the organization and to dramatically increase the organization's ability to dynamically bind around problems. Every worker in the organization also needs to be a lifelong learner where they are a personalized, self-driven growth design. Every worker needs to know what their best skills or their attributes are. 
and they need to be empowered to continually co-create the work in the organization that leverages their best loved skills. Every worker in the organization needs to have what I call a portfolio of work with core projects and problems to solve. But they would also be continually pulled into a problem solving exercises with other teams to ensure that diverse thinkers are in the room. And every worker needs to be responsible for helping to continually bring new talents into the organization. If this all sounds like a chaotic nightmare to you, then I'd encourage you to spend some time with some of my other courses like Developing Organization Agility, Agile Leadership and Innovation. Let me make the case that this is the way that the change committed organization of the future will inevitably run. If a perpetually adaptive organization sounds like a dream come true to you, then by becoming a changed leader, you are already helping some part of the organization to start down that road.